Hello? Hey, honey. How are the kids? Everything's great. Wow. Is she having adolescence? And Jack Jack? <laughs> He's in excellent health. No! What the? Num num cooking. Oh, my God. Cooking. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. That is freaky. See what I did there? <laughs> What's up, global citizens? Today, we are learning English with Pixar Disney's animation, The Incredibles 2. You'll learn lots of business-related vocabulary you can start using right now while understanding a bit more of the American lifestyle. But in case you're new here, the scenes we chose have no spoilers. You will watch two scenes from the movie, learn the vocabulary, and then have the chance to watch it again without the subtitles with a few quiz questions. Because that's what we do here at Learn English with TV. Three times a week, we help you understand fast English without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Just like Hamid, who says that our channel is an effective way to learn English. If you enjoy learning with your favorite movies and TV series, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and also check out our Disney playlist where you'll find lessons with Soul, Up, Tangled, and so many great more movies. Just click the link in the description below. Let's get started with the lesson. We've got resources, lobbyists, worldwide connections, and very important, insurance. Insurance is key. All we need now are the super superheroes. It needs you three. Come on, help me make all supers legal again. This sounds great. Let's get this going. What's my first assignment? That enthusiasm is golden. Now hold on to it. After being forced to hide their superheroes' identities, The Incredibles, actually Elastigirl, is offered an attractive job opportunity that would allow the whole family to be superheroes again. We've got resources, lobbyists, worldwide connections, and very important, insurance. Insurance is key. When they are presented with the job opportunity, there are a few advantages highlighted. Let's look at them. The first one is resources. Resources refer to everything valuable that a company has, such as equipment, employees, technology, and so on. Having resources can also imply that the company has a large budget, that is, enough money to develop a project or achieve its goals. Borstman is his backer! I know. Well, then you know that he has unlimited resources and I can't fight a war on multiple fronts. The second advantage of the job presented to the Incredibles is the lobbyists. A lobbyist or lobby group is a person or group who try to influence politicians or influential groups to change a law to benefit that lobby group. A well-known lobby group in the US is the National Rifle Association, commonly referred to as the NRA. The third thing mentioned in an attempt to convince them is worldwide connections. Worldwide is used to refer to things that exist or happen across the globe. This means that the company is known and connected to different parts of the world. Another phrase he could have used to express the idea of worldwide connections is, we are part of a global network. Just now. At a worldwide summit, leaders from more than a hundred of the world's top countries have agreed to make superheroes legal again! If you are looking into expanding your network, to feel more confident to speak English, and connect with people from all around the globe, then I want to tell you, you can do it all at just the touch of a button. We built the Real Life app so that you can connect to other English learners from around the world and practice your speaking while discovering other cultures in a fun and dynamic way through short conversations. It's like your virtual passport to the world. In addition to that, you can improve your comprehension with real life native conversations by following a transcription of our podcast. You will understand 100% and never forget the most important vocabulary. So download it now by clicking the link down in the description below or search for the Real Life English app in the Apple App Store 
or the Google Play Store. I look forward to seeing you there. We've got resources, lobbyists, worldwide connections, and very important, insurance. Insurance is key. The final argument to convince them to take the job is insurance. Most likely, he's referring to health insurance, that is, a plan to cover medical expenses. Mr. Incredible gets excited and says that insurance is key. If something is key, it means that it's fundamental or really important. The reason why he says that is because medical care in the US tends to be quite expensive and for being a father of three, having access to this benefit is extremely important to him. Insurance? Oh yeah, check it. Definitely gonna want some of that. <laughs> you don't have insurance? Why? How much is this gonna cost? I have no idea, but x-rays alone could be a couple hundred dollars. Well, well what are we gonna do? Ooh, there's not much we can do. Uh, unless, unless I use yours. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> well, now, wait a second. Who did I just put as my in case of emergency person? <laughs> it's insurance fraud. Well, all right, then forget it. Might as well just go home. Come on! Help me make all supers legal again! Legal is a term used to refer to anything connected with the law. Thus, the legal department in a company is responsible for dealing with all legal matters, such as contracts, forms, and so much more. Conversely, if something is illegal, it means that it is contrary to or prohibited by the law. I also do not advise you to fill out and file a WS2475 form with our legal department on the second floor. She's an advocate for superheroes. It's a new job. So, mom is going out illegally to explain why she shouldn't be illegal. This sounds great! Let's get this going. Did you notice how he connected the words get and this? Let's get this going. You can hear only one T sound. This is a common feature of connected speech. When one word ends with, and the next word begins with the same consonant sound, they are connected and you pronounce that sound a little bit longer. We call this gemination. Take a look. Social life? Social life. Now try it with me. I don't have much of a social life. This site? This site. Now repeat after me. The tickets are cheaper on this site. Calm man? Calm man. Now, try it with me. He seems such a calm man. What's my first assignment? That enthusiasm is golden. Now hold on to it. When Mr. Incredible asks, what's my first assignment? He wants to know what his mission will be. You call an assignment every job or task a boss or a teacher gives you to do. No, go on, your new suit will be finished before your next assignment. You know I'm retired from hero work. That enthusiasm is golden. What does he mean by that enthusiasm is golden? A, having enthusiasm means earning more money. B, having enthusiasm is appreciated and valued by the company. C. Having enthusiasm will bring more profits to the company. If you chose B, then you are correct. Literally golden refers to anything that is made of gold. However, if you say that something is golden, it means that it is valuable, important, or advantageous. So you wait for me in the Browns my skin just right. You're so golden. Now hold on to it. Here, Mr. Dever asks him to hold on to his enthusiasm. This means that he wants him to continue being enthusiastic about the job he's offering. If you ask someone to hold on to something, you want them to keep doing what they are doing because it's important or useful. But for our first move, well, Elastigirl is our best play.
Better than me? <clears throat> I mean, she's good. She uh, really a credit to her, but uh, you know. <laughs> You know. With great respect, let's not test the whole insurance will pay for everything idea on the first go round, okay? <laughs> All right, wait a minute. You're saying what? I'm messy? Well, Evelyn did a cost benefit analysis comparing all your last five years of crime fighting before going underground. And Elastigirl's numbers are self explanatory. Well, it's not a fair comparison. I mean, heavyweight problems need heavyweight solutions. Of course. We're going to solve all kinds of problems together after the Perfect launch with Elastigirl. So, what do you say? But for our first move, well, Elastigirl is our best play. Better than me? <clears throat> a move in the business context is a strategic action towards an objective. For example, our next move is to invest in inbound marketing. Now, what's the difference between better and best? We use better when comparing two things. For example, coffee is better than tea. Or, I have a better idea. Why don't we ask the team which bonus they prefer? Best, on the other hand, is used when one option stands out from all the others. For example, Brazilian coffee is the best in the world. Or, do you know what's best? to implement a work from home policy until the pandemic is over. Better and best are respectively the comparative and superlative forms of good. Note, they are irregular. Check out Ethan's explanation of regular comparatives and superlatives. Normally, comparative adjectives appear as one of these two options. For short adjectives, adjective plus er, example, cooler, faster, smarter. For long adjectives, more plus adjective. Example, more intelligent, more creative, more fascinating. Superlatives normally appear as one of these two options. For short adjectives, adjective plus est. Example, coolest, fastest, smartest. So how exactly are you planning to stop this weather? Oh, I am going to talk to my sister. <laughs> yeah. I bet she's the nicest, gentlest, warmest person ever. For long adjectives, most plus adjective. Example, most intelligent, most creative, most fascinating. I mean, she's good. She's uh, really a credit to her, but uh, you know, <laughs> you know. To give someone credit means to recognize their work and show they deserve being praised. Now, did you notice how surprised Mr. Incredible was in this scene? And because of that, it was difficult for him to find the right words to say. While he was trying to find them, he said, I mean, really, you know, this is a resource of fluent speakers called discourse markers. Check out how Andrea explains and exemplifies this. You need to actively work on specific things in order to improve your level. So for example, I've just been working on a lesson with discourse markers, and these are a really important aspect of vocabulary because when you can recognize them, you can then actually, if, if you understand that it's a discourse marker, which is basically just like a, a filler. And I actually noticed from starting to work on the podcast and recording the podcast, just how much I use them. So it really allowed me to realize how much I use discourse markers. Can you give a couple examples? Yeah, so there's one, so. So it's just kind of linking my ideas together. You don't really need to know the meaning of it or really think about, oh, so she's saying so, what does that mean? And then there's other ones like, I mean. We use I mean a lot at the start of sentences as well, but it's just to kind of kick off the sentence. You don't really need to think about those words. So if you're identifying those, if you've actually worked on this, you can identify them and not spend so much time translating them or thinking about them. And then when, when you have a really good grip of them, you can even start using them yourself. And what they're going to do is buy you thinking time in those moments where you're maybe having a conversation and you're not quite sure what to say next, you can, 
if, if it's more natural to you, you can use discourse markers as a way to think about what to say next. With great respect, let's not test the whole insurance will pay for everything idea on the first go round, okay? With great respect is a polite way of disagreeing with what someone said. It's common to also hear with all due respect with the same meaning. I know the chief of police, there won't be a problem. With all due respect, if you alone had handled the underminer, things would have been different. Go round in this context is when you do something or when you try to do something. Mr. Devis says he doesn't want Mr. Incredible destroying everything around him on their first attempt at the mission of making superheroes legal again. Well, Evelyn did a cost-benefit analysis comparing all your last five years of crime fighting before going underground. And Elastigirl's numbers are self-explanatory. Cost-benefit analysis, or CBA, is something done by companies to evaluate if a project is worth pursuing. They measure if the benefits will compensate for all the financial costs involved in taking action. If you steal my watch by midnight, I will do your paperwork for a week, but if you fail, you will give me five weeks of overtime for free. Correct. I'm doing a cost-benefit analysis in my head. The benefits outweigh the costs. Underground literally means below the surface. It's even the name given to the railroad system, the subway, in the UK. However, here underground refers to a secret illegal activity. Careful not to confuse it with going undercover, which means using a false appearance to obtain information for the police or government. He was heartbroken when you were all forced to go underground. Father believed the world would be more dangerous without you. Assignments. Officers Grizzoli, Fangmire, Delgato, Tundratown, Swat, Snarlov, Higgins, Wolford. Undercover. Hops. Wild. Parking duty. Dismissed. Elastigirl's numbers are self-explanatory. If something is self-explanatory, it means that it is obvious and doesn't need extra explanation or illustration. Richard, can you stop? I can explain, okay? It's pretty self-explanatory, Monica. You voted to fire me. Well, it's not a fair comparison. I mean, heavyweight problems need heavyweight solutions. Of course. If something is heavyweight, it means that it's important. So Mr. Incredible does a wordplay with heavyweight here when he shows that he is the one that should do the job. He means that important problems need heavyweight solutions. The joke is that heavyweight is also something or someone that is above the average weight, that is someone who is bigger or fatter than the others. Additionally, it also refers to the strongest and biggest people, particularly in a boxing match. Mr. Incredible no doubt considers himself the strongest, which is why he volunteers himself to fix the heavyweight problem. Of course, we're gonna solve all kinds of problems together after the perfect launch with Elastigirl. So, what do you say? Launching is the process of introducing a new product into the market for customers to buy. To launch our magnificent new hover tray. So, what do you say? In connected speech, consonant and vowel sounds change all the time in order to make the speech, that is, the muscle and voice, work easier for the body. In this sentence, the T in what changes to become similar to the D sound in do. That's why there's a roll of the tongue when you hear, what do you say? Let's try it out. What do you say? You might hear this referred to as the flat T sound in American English. I hope you enjoyed learning with The Incredibles 2 today. And before you watch the scenes without subtitles and answer a few quiz questions, I want to tell you that I have a bonus lesson for you over on our Instagram. So run over there at reallife.english because I prepared a lesson with The Incredibles family having just another family moment. And did you know that you can learn English every day with us? That's right, every day we have different lessons on all of our channels, podcasts and Instagram. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at reallife.english to be informed of the lessons we publish every day. Oh yeah!
We've got resources, lobbyists, worldwide connections, and very important, insurance. Insurance is key. What is the meaning of key in this context? A, essential, B, required, C, trivial. All we need now are the super superheroes. It needs you three. Come on, help me make all supers legal again. But this sounds great. Let's get this going. What's my first assignment? That enthusiasm is golden. Now hold on to it. But for our first move, well, Elastigirl is our best play. Better than me? <clears throat> I mean, she's good. She's uh, really a credit to her, but uh, you know. <laughs> You know. With great respect, let's not test the whole insurance will pay for everything idea on the first go round, okay? <laughs> All right, wait a minute. You're saying what? I'm messy? Well, Evelyn did a cost benefit analysis comparing all your last five years of crime fighting before going underground. If something happens underground, it means that A, it's done under the ground, B, it's done illegally, C, it's done by a police officer. Elastigirl's numbers are self-explanatory. Well, it's not a fair comparison. I mean, heavyweight problems need heavyweight solutions. Of course. We're going to solve all kinds of problems together after the perfect launch with Elastigirl. In which sentence below does the word launch mean introduce a new product into the market? A. The police have launched an investigation into his activities. B. The launch was successful and we've grown 20% of our revenue already. C. NASA is planning to launch a telescope mission in December. This is our new house! Okay, easy tiger. It's being loaned to us. Mm, this is homey. I mean, look at this place. Dever bought it from an eccentric billionaire who liked to come and go without being seen, so the house has multiple hidden exits. Good thing we won't stand out. We don't want to attract any unnecessary attention. It's got a big yard! This is... isn't this a bit much? Era forest! Do you want to understand your favorite Disney movies? Well, this lesson is based on the themes and characters of one of Pixar's best movies, Wally. -E. So first, Andrea and I will introduce you to the story of the movie by talking about the setting, main character, and theme. Then as we do that, you'll learn some vocabulary related to the story of the movie. And then we will have a chat about this beautiful movie involving this cute little robot named Wally. -E. 